Hey guys, so in this video, I want to talk about DITO, PHA, AC, and SM. But before that, I want to talk about DITO and the results of the technical audit. So for those who, those among you who are in Facebook, you already saw my post talking about DITO. But for those who are in YouTube, I want to make this video for you. So basically, DITO, we've been watching this or we've been tracking this over the past few months. How would they fare for their technical audit? So please do note that all eyes are still on their March 2021 opening. But prior to that, as you all know, a couple of weeks ago, they did their technical audit. So right now, they released the results of the technical audit, which is favorable for them. And for those who are following Dito, this are good news for you. This is good news for you. So basically, Dito passes the technical audit. Here are some of the details. Number one, speeds of Dito for 5G was around 507.5 Mbps, which is relatively fast, which it hit a peak speed of 769.1 Mbps for 4G slash LTE. It was around 85.9 Mbps with a peak, peak speed of 102.4 Mbps. So please do note this is uh, factoring in a sample size that they picked. And also this also does not have, a, as you all know, they don't have any subscribers yet. So it would also be different already when you have uh, a large amount of people logged into the network. So as of now, they have 1,602 cell sites, which uh, gives them around 37, which allows Dito to cover 37.5% of, of the population, which is uh, what is required also for them to be able to operate or which is part of the parameters that has been set for them. So good news for those who are tracking Dito. Um, it's... It's good to note that they are they have passed. It's good to note that at least we now all sites now will be on number one, their opening, number two, how much of a market share they will get, number three, what are they their sales are, number four, what do they do as they start to earn? How do they ramp up everything so fast? So what's interesting over the next I think few months is we get to now see how they operate as a business. Please do note that uh all of this gives them a seat at the table, how they utilize it, how they run the business, how they earn. That's where we see the fundamentals of the company start to take place. So before that, I'd like to talk about the index. Let me just put in some of the, uh, some, some parameters also, so we get to analyze it at a, I guess at a more holistic uh, way as well. Let me, my chart's not loading it. Let, let me just wait, there you go. Okay, I'll, then I'll just put some moving averages in. Then let's put uh, RSI also into this. Okay, so uh, for the close of today, no, uh, we saw the PSAI close at 6810. Um, one thing is very, very clear also right now that it's inching towards back its 100-day moving average. So what's so interesting about that is, as you can see right here, from the March uptrend, Every time it would hit close to the 50-day moving average it, or 100-day moving average, it would start to bounce back up again. So that's what it's trying to threaten once again right here in the sloping part of this particular uptrend. So should the bounce happen, then possible narrative still is the 7,343 resistance would still be pretty much intact. The sideways progression would still also be pretty much intact over the short term. But the long-term upward reverse that started from the bounce of March 2020 would also be pretty much intact. So that being said, uh, this is the this is how flat MACD also is. It's still confirming the flatness of whatever movement that we're seeing here. But from a downwards from a downward notion, though, please do note this that the bounce here, at least the, the failure to break this 50-day moving average, is what's resulting on whatever downward motion that we are seeing right now. So possible landing spot right now would be at least somewhere close to this. 50-day moving average or 100-day moving average and this upward trending slope. So let's see how it responds over the next few days. If not, let next possible landing spot or retracement could be at the 6,358 level. So allow me to update you over the next few days how that could possibly go. Now, on to the stocks that I've mentioned. By the way, if you're new to this, please do note that these are not stock picks. These are not stock tips. These are, this is not me uh, telling you what stocks to buy. Every time we talk about stocks here, this is analysis from a technical analysis point of view. Never ever buy, sell, hold, or avoid a stock just because you hear it on YouTube. It's your money. It's your responsibility. Please take the time to learn. Please take the time to analyze. 
please never buy just because you hear it on YouTube or you hear it from your friend. It has to be you analyzing it on your own. It has to be you taking the time to double down to build the skills necessary for you to be able to trade the markets with confidence. Now, that being said, this is how PHA is. What an amazing bounce that we saw from the 20-day moving average. What an amazing bounce from the 2.6 peso support level. So the 2.6 resistance turned itself as a support and it, as we saw it there very, very well, it started to bounce. So the retracement from Feb 11 hitting the support range, it hit that, stayed there Feb 18. Then the next day it started to bounce once again. So tomorrow it's at the resistance already. A uh, key thing though, if it does not uh, go above this level, for those who are quick traders, please check this out. That this particular trade, no, this is already around 27.8%. Failure to break the 3.24 level could warrant a take profit signal for those who are quick traders, for those who are looking at this and positioning into this for the short term. So that's where we are right now. Uh, you have a support level at the 2.55. You have a resistance level at the 3.24 mark for PHA. Anyways, let's look at AC. For AC, this is how it looks. AC, once again, right now is back at the 200-day moving average. It's back at the support level. It's back... Uh, where it was before, you know, that as it hit this level, started to bounce, it just got blocked by the 50-day moving average. So tomorrow, AC is in a make or break situation. If it falls here, then we could probably see a deeper slide for AC once again. But if it does not, then AC could once again just move sideways. AC once again could just uh, continue its path right here from support of, from the support of 760 or 756 to the resistance at the 863 level. That being said, I'll just since it hit the 50-day moving average a couple of days ago, tapos hindi niya nabasag yun, I'll peg it again that a short-term resistance could be at the 809 level, which is where the 50-day moving average is, to as high as here, uh, the 863 level where the consolidation for AC is currently at. So that's how it looks like. And one thing you know, that's so clear about this is if you'll try to project this right here, uh, from at least from the March drop, and then you start to peg this also. It it retraced once again. No, I'll just peg this here so you have full context, yeah. And so you get to see everything. Uh, it tried to it tried to slope downward, but it got also protected. So one thing that I'd like to show you, at least for the narrative of AC, is it had a good bounce from the lows of March. It had a good run up until June. It slid again, moved sideways, broke down, and since november 2020 it's just currently consolidating so again everything will hinge on the 756 support for ac next possible resistance will be here at the 864 level next is uh sm um comment below if you're learning comment if this is something that's helping you for those who are who are nagtataka kayo bakit sobrang late ng video um been so busy uh aside from of course being preoccupied by cryptos and uh, the u.s markets I've I've started to pursue other business interests as well, and I'm I'm trying to go back to 2019 levels in terms of productivity. As you all know, for those who have been following me, following me for quite some time, or at least from last year, uh, I pretty much just played StarCraft um, for some time last year. But uh, I realized that I have to be be more productive once again. So I'm restarting, um, looking into startups once again. I'm restarting also investing and trying to find more opportunities still uh, i just really love investing but i i am firm with my commitment also to share my ideas to share the way i analyze to share the way i do things uh in the markets and that's why kahit late to kahit alam ko madami sa inyo tulog na hindi na, pap, hindi na mapapanood to but i i'm doing this also because i just love doing it i love it that for to anyone that's watching this, I hope that this still gives massive value and content to all of you wherever you may be in the world. So SM, uh, as you can see right here, it's still in the same motion as AC that it's currently consolidating. Our current consolidation range is which is which started November 2020 to where we are right now. So it's been consolidating from November, December, January. Then we're now in the fourth month at least, uh, February 2021. Range for SM hasn't changed, 977 support, 1,096 resistance. Again, um, red candle today, failure to hold the 20-day moving average. Possible retracement area will bring it to the 977 support level. So 
977 support wait for it to continue to retrace it did that hit that level already february so from 977 hits that level that's a buying opportunity target will be the 196 resistance level and that could be something very predictable because it's currently still moving sideways however if the 977 support does not hold next possible landing spot for it will be here at the 945 level which is where the 200 day moving average is Lastly, let's look at DITO since every one of you requested DITO also since every one of you is looking at DITO and because of the news disclosure that came in, uh, this is how the charts look like. But again, for those who want to learn technical analysis, um, our classes are this Saturday and Sunday and the week after that. We're going to talk about all of the things that I'm showing you here from candlesticks, support and resistance, moving averages, MACD, RSI, ADX, uh, and all of the other parameters that I normally use or at least use to analyze uh, stocks in the Philippine Stock Exchange or rules that you can also use both for crypto and also for uh, U.S. markets as well. So for Dito, let's try to look at it. Uh, if you look at it right now, um, RSI is overbought. MACD is above zero still denoting uh, whatever trend that is here is still bullish. Then you have a, you have the, you have have this uh, after the change in direction that happened last Feb, Mac, uh, Dito continued its movement up. Then I just like to note this also that I mentioned that over the past few days it was trying to break or, or at least consolidate slowly you know, at the 17.95 level or the 18 peso level. One thing happened today, uh, it closed at 18.12. So further solidifying you know, that uh, though there were some people selling here, uh, buyers are still emerging right now with the fact that it closed higher at 18.12 pesos per share. So a couple of things that I'd like to note for those who positioned earlier, uh, the uptrend is still pretty much, much intact. Uh, the trend line here is still intact as well. Uh, the 20, 50, 100, the 200 day moving averages, there's still no cross down. For MACD, it's showing us bits and pieces of uh, weakness also factored in by the consolidation that happened here. RSI is overbought, but there's still no cross down that's happening uh, right now. So the closest that you could ever put is the 20 day moving average, which even at this point in time is still not broken. So one thing that you could watch though is watch out for the next few days if this particular level, 17.8 or 18 pesos, solidifies itself as a level of support. If that happens, 17.8 slash 18 solidifies as a level of support, then we may see more legs in this to continually push up. If it doesn't, retracement will be possibly here at the 20 day moving average, which is 15.11 to somewhere around here at the 14 peso level, which is where the uptrend also is. So there, I hope you guys got a lot from this. I hope that this is something that's interesting for you, even though no, um, US markets and um, cryptocurrency markets have been more exciting over the past few weeks. Um, there's still opportunities in the Philippine market. It's just that I guess I've been more excited in, in other markets over the past few weeks than uh, than Philippine stocks because there's not much movement with the exception of Dito, APL, PHA, BSC, MM, uh, ASEN, and a couple other stocks more. But other than that, wala, wala na shadow. But that's why it's nice also to be diversified. It's nice to have uh, bits and pieces of stocks or assets in different uh, in different markets and different brokers, which allows you to be able to have exposure in other countries and parts in the world and allows you also to have if one area is not doing well at least you have another that will work for you so there i hope you guys got a lot from this it's midnight i have another early day tomorrow lots of uh, lots of meetings once again um lots of things that i'm doing and i think i'm entering already uh I, i'm trying to position more also in the real estate market so if anyone ha have any good deals or at least uh, condos that you would want to pitch, uh, just send them over via my Instagram account. Or if you know uh, some brokers that have uh, interesting deals, either condominiums or uh, lots or or areas uh, around the south of Manila uh, that you think I might be interested in or something that may give uh, growth also, just slide them over uh, my Instagram and I'll take a look at it. So uh, this year, aside from looking at um, some businesses that I would want to venture into, and starting some new ones on my own and then, and then doubling down more in crypto and uh, u.s markets um i'm gonna i'm gonna venture in and diversify also more in uh, the property space as well so you uh, know just sharing bits and pieces of uh, of how i'm doing things and 
to everyone that, that's joining us on Saturday. I hope to see you all there. And uh, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.